Good day guys and welcome back. We just came back from a fishing trip and we were jigging and caught this giant giant trevally. Now I know a lot of guys have controversy about eating these fish but this fish was foul hooked. So when you, most guys will just throw it back and hope it survives, but here's a method, you should rather eat it and not waste the fish that has just died. I know a lot of guys say they didn't know, but when the fish is bleeding from the gills, you should know that they will die. And we're going to do a catch and cook showing that this fish actually has good eating qualities. Firstly, we'll be filleting the fish and then uh, I'll be showing you how to prepare it as a meal. We're going to be cutting behind the pictorial fin and uh, make an incision right to the head, wasting as little meat as possible. You'll feel the bone running. Next, we're going to be just making an incision on the skin, not entering the meat. When you get to this hard bone part, you want to be just continuing into it because the meat is still here. You'll be able to cut right through. Same story for the bottom side, just bit into the skin so that you can open it up and see what's going on. Now you want to be spreading the skin a little bit, seeing your initial incision, just continuing feeling the bone, not all the way to the backbone yet, because otherwise they might be making error. Just slowly follow the bones. As you come to this hard bony tail, you want to make an, put your knife right over the backbone, then exit the other side. Just start cutting through the meat. There you go. Now, it's a simple case of just picking it up and following the backbone.
as you get to the as you get to the rib part of the fish you can just make an incision on the, through the belly follow a rib down to the incision and you should make a slight hole for your convenience being able to put your finger through it and just follow the joints of the backbone Pull it back. There you go. Very white meat. Usually white meat fish will be very nice tasting. You want to get rid of this blood, we'll give it a quick wash. Now you see, I missed two of these rib bones. A lot of meat usually gets wasted when you skip the rib bone, so you just need to get right under the bone and take away the bone and the stomach skin. Usually there might be parasites in the skin of the stomach lining, so you don't really want that. See, here's a, the middle line you'll see the pin bones running right back. Only halfway though. You want to get on one side of them and make an incision. The fish still has its, um, has its skin on. And that won't be a problem. There's an easy way to get rid of it. You don't really want to eat the GD skin. It has small um, scales. Now you just want to enter along your incision line, turn your knife sideways and work it out to the side. You get this very neat separation of the meat from the skin. It is a very dense and hard meat, but that won't be a, won't be a problem. Same story here with the bottom half. Get on one side of the, of the bones. Get right to the bloodline. Wasting as little meat as possible. There you go, your two top half and bottom half, wasting no f fish on the skin except the bloodline, which you won't want to be eating. On the other side, you have a small bloodline that we can easily take out. With the bloodline, you want to insert the knife approximately where you think the blood will be ending and just be cutting up to the fish as far as you can you don't want to be eating this bloodline it tastes extremely fishy and like iron you won't, don't want to be taking off any of the meat only this uh, bloodline
There you go guys, your whole entire top fillet without any blood on it. That is it for the giant trevally, the fish that nobody wants to eat or kill. Now, you shouldn't be throwing dead fish back and not only, also not wasting any meat. There's no waste, me, wasted meat on this uh, fish body and here is uh, what the fillet will be looking like. I'll show you now how to prepare it. Right, so now it's time to pre prepare the fish. Got the fire ready. Gonna be using olive oil, two kinds of fish spices, rosemary and garlic, some salt and a chicken spice. Now chicken spice can also be used on fish and some little bit of sugar. The olive oil is mainly for the, the spices to stick to the fish because most of this will be falling off into the fire and also to help as a non-stick. The sugar you won't be putting too much of on is just to give that uh, sweeter taste. Also getting rid of a lot of the fishy taste you often get in uh, fresh fish. Not a lot of, not everybody will be liking a fishy taste in their fish. And it does look like I am seasoning one side a lot, but it's because I'm not going to be doing the other side. You don't want a very hot fire for this. You don't want to burn the fish at all. Burning them will make it really hard on the outside and especially dry on the inside. You want to place the grid as far off as you can. You don't want very, very hot fire on this fish. I won't be doing it for too long. You don't really want to overcook fish. That's a mistake most people make and why most people don't like eating fish. Fish then becomes dry and tasteless. Um, I'll be leaving it for about 10 minutes each side, flipping it without burning it. Then it should be ready. It will take about 20, 20 to 30 minutes. 
You really just want to keep it at that white, white color, not, not over the top burning, browning. All right, so these are done. I put some garlic butter on, on them be before we, I turned them the last time, just to rehydrate the outer layer and uh, like nobody will say no to garlic. It just improves the taste by a million. And um, it's done. Also, we didn't overcook it. Everything is uh, cooked, but not dry. We cut it open to see the insides and then now we can serve it up. <laughs> 